Hi there, welcome to my channel. If you are new and if you're returning, welcome back. My name is Christy. I am in Northern Alberta, Canada, and I have a homestead slash flower farm, and this is my full-time gig. So I am going to share with you how I am doing things on my farm, and I'm also going to share with you some of my best sellers from 2023, where I found there was the most profit um, for me. I did have some really big heat issues in the spring of 2023. We started off the year, usually we have a very cool spring, May time, usually the 25th of May is my last frost date. And up until that point at nighttime, it's very common for it to get down to minus 10. Um, it's happened year after year. I remember one time getting a foot of snow on May 18th and it was 20 below. It is, it is something that is not uncommon here we have a very cool climate up here. So in May of 2023, we had 30 above heat wave and at nighttime, it was still 30 above. Um, we had like a week where the temperature would not drop at all in the evening. So I had a very big issue with that because I had like thousands of tulips planted. I planted them in the fall and they were all coming up beautifully. And my projection was to have Mother's Day tulips. What happened, they didn't quite make Mother's Day. So they were delayed because we had cold later, really cold. And then it went re from really cold to really hot. And, you know, over the winter time, we had negative 55 degrees Celsius wind chills. My tulips were ready the day after Mother's Day and some of them were ready on Mother's Day. So my florists, they work on Mother's Day blooms as pre-orders and they, you know, Mother's Day day was too late for my sales of flowers. And then what happened is all of my flowers started to bloom at one time because it went from regular temperatures or cool, cool springtime temperatures to 30 above. And they just blew all of them blew open actually my late season tulips were blooming blowing out and blooming first my lisianthus and ranunculus were actually blooming at the same time the temperatures in a million years i would never have expected to have ranunculus and lisianthus blooming at the same time in northern alberta zone two so one of the craziest things that i had done in the 2023 growing season is i took ranunculus corn starts i spread pre-sprouted some in january and i planted them in my greenhouse um in the ground and i did not turn the heat on in the greenhouse in january and i covered them with some mulch and i covered them with three layers of row cover i did however put a heat tape over top of the leaf mulch and had it on a thermostat. So if under the leaf mulch where the where the ranunculus corms were and the anemone corms were, if that dropped to, you know, below a certain temperature, like if it got to three degrees Celsius, the heat tape would kick on and it would warm it up. Or if it got to zero, the heat tape would kick on and it would warm it up to three degrees Celsius so that the, the corms themselves were not getting such a hard frost. In my climate, even though it's harsh and it can get to be brutal, like 50 below Celsius, that ranunculus can still grow here as a cold hardy annual. And I can put them out and trick them into believing they were fall planted. So that was a really big learning experience for me. That method, now I grew thousands of, of ranunculus last year and I, I had increased the amount of um, ranunculus I grew, but what I did learn is that treating or treating them as a, as a cold hardy annual by putting them out in January, um, pre, pre sprouting them and making them think that they were fall planted in this climate per square foot. I increased the production. Let me see what it was here. Um, compared to last year per square foot per square foot in my greenhouse, I increased the productivity of my ranunculus 436% by giving them that for, that false fall planting um, experience, I guess, of tricking my ranunculus to thinking they were fall planted or that they were perennial because they had a really good root system. 
and they produced a lot of flowers. So why do I attribute the fall planting as something that was beneficial to these plants? Because in the spring in May, when these things should be rocking and rolling in my climate, it was 30 above outside. And so I had to cool my greenhouse down because I had them inside of a greenhouse. And I had to cool my greenhouse down so they wouldn't go dormant because they go dormant at 25 degrees Celsius. And so we were past that. Like inside the greenhouse, it would get to be 35 or 40 easy by 7 a.m. in the morning because it was so hot. Um, in the evenings, there was days where I was getting up every hour and going and spraying in there because it was not dropping below 30 degrees Celsius outside. So I had to cool it down. Usually when the sun goes down, it cools off, right? It wasn't happening. There was a, there, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. So the fact per square foot, I had increased my productivity of ranunculus to 436% according to my tracking and invoicing. According to my records, um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. My ranunculus was the most productive cut flower I had on the farm. And it wasn't what I had the most planted. I think neck and neck, I had the same amount of Lysianthus planted as the ranunculus, but the ranunculus per square foot, it far outperformed any other cut flower that I had on the farm. It was the most profitable that I could grow. And that fall planting or tricking it as a fall planting when I planted it in January, under the row cover in that greenhouse in the ground it definitely upped my production tremendously and they sell really well in my in my area all the florists want those big italian beautiful blooms and so that's what i'm bringing in this year more of that and um i'm focusing a lot more on ranunculus this year because i know i can grow it well even in those harsh climates i do know that by putting more effort into the soil health in the greenhouse and planting in the ground, layering it up with a lot of leaf mulch and putting in good sprinkler systems that you can mist in there with nice cold water. I was able to keep my greenhouse last year at, at during the day, during the peak of the day when we were at 40, 40 degrees outside, 40 degrees Celsius outside, I was able to put uh, shade cloth down. I was able to begin maintaining that greenhouse structure throughout the day at around 17 degrees Celsius, which was what made those ranunculus do so well. Um, so I definitely, I definitely have learned a lot this year and I'm going to implement that or last year. I learned a lot last year and I'm going to implement that a lot this coming year and put a lot more effort into upping the production of ranunculus and how I've learned to grow it in a structure like a greenhouse. So. Tulips were very cheap on the markets. So my florists, you know, they're not going to pay me what I need to get for those tulips, right? Even the double tulips, they were not going to be able to pay me what I, what I needed because everyone's tulips bloomed at the same time. So the supply and demand was ridiculous. They were ridiculously cheap. The commercial tulips were so cheap and so available to everybody that a little old farmer like me is not going to make much profits off of tulips. But, um, you know, I still did pretty good. They were still my number two crop for the 2023 season. And uh, so I'm really happy with that. I actually sold more tulips last year. Um, my, I had a decrease in the, in the per square foot production of my farm, how much I was able to actually sell. Um, so it was a little bit disheartening because I probably could have planted other things that would have made me more money. Like, um, in place of those tulips, I could have put other things that were perennials for next year or for the, like this coming year, um, this coming season. So it was a little disheartening there, but they, you know, I still did okay. My number three was lilies. Now this year I did not do crates. Um, I planted everything at the same time. 
all of my lilies have a different bloom time and they lasted all season long. So I had some perennial lilies that I was able to cut off of and then I had some that I had planted um, and in, we enjoyed them. Um, and I was able to petal them between two florists and then also just off the sale, off the farm sales or bouquet bars. So they were a really big hit. Um, the lily per square foot, I was able to increase my sales 36% from the previous year. Um, and so that was good. And I think it was because I had, the reason I had a 36% increase is because I had perennialized some of them. And, um, but I, I just, I didn't think that the lilies sold as well as I thought they should have, because I had a lot in the field still. I'm just gonna continue on bringing in more bulbs in or like in the spring. Um, and I'm gonna try succession planting them so I can have a, an extended season either in the springtime or in the fall um, and try to increase my production on them uh, this year. It wasn't my best seller. It was the number four of my best seller list, but the productivity. So these, I had second year yarrow and a lot of first year yarrow, but my second year yarrow, who, uh, per square foot, the increase of sales I had per square foot and yields per, per square foot on my second year yarrow that I planted as perennials was 833% per square foot increase. So yeah, um, yarrow was a big win and it just gets better and better and better as it ages. It was, I, I was able to cut off of it early um, because I had planted some out and they bloomed early and then they went dormant and then they bloomed again in the fall. And then I had some that came back, came very strong and I got three flushes off of my perennial yarrow, um, three really good harvests off of my yarrow. So per square foot, those mature yarrow did phenomenal in my climate. And there was a constant demand with them for them with the florists for all kinds of things it, they were the yarrow was used um in birthday designs wedding designs all the things they just wanted buckets of yarrow my number five anemone now anemone i don't really have anything to compare it to for the anemone i don't have any data to see in comparison what um how much of an increase in production i had from the year before because i didn't grow it um as a cut flower in the year before but I, it, it, it was a good contender. It was number five. It was my number five producer. And I also grew this in the greenhouse with the ranunculus. Per square foot, this thing rocked it. So that was my number six top profitable flower on the farm. Now, my number seven most profitable is not a flower. Um, so my my number seven most profitable item that i've sold on the farm was actually greeting cards of pictures of my flowers now in honesty i also had uh, made greeting cards of original art sketches that i had done and i made them available at christmas time but what was most profitable or number seven on my most profitable list this past season was the greeting cards. I had made them available at one of my florists. She carries them as a regular stock so I can stock her inventory. I design them and I just reorder and stock her inventory or create new designs. But basically I just went around my garden and took pictures of my flowers and then made greeting cards and people really liked them. The most profitable one though that I was sold the most was a 10 pack, a 10 pack, it was a variety pack of all of the different flowers, um, not all of them, but I, it was a good variety of different flower types. And that was the most, um, that was the most sold item that I, or that was the number eight sold item, most sold item on my farm. And I sold those for about 27 bucks for a 10 pack and they sold out quickly within five weeks. Oh, that was number six. Anatomy, okay, ranunculus number one, Tulips number two, lilies number three, yarrow number four, anemone number five, cards number six, lisianthus is number seven. 
Now, Lysianthus, I had the most invested in. I ordered from Jolly Farmer last year and I had a lot of problems. I had a lot of things rosette on me because it was just too hot. They were, it was, it was a gong show. I don't even want to talk about my 2023 Lysianthus. It's embarrassing and disheartening. Um, actually, it should have, I'm looking at my numbers, you guys, and there's a mistake made. There's two lines of Lysianthus. So Lysianthus should actually be just above the greeting cards. And um, the Lysianthus should be between the greeting cards and the and the an enemy. So an enemy was better seller than the than the Lysianthus. I made more money off of anemones than I did the Lysianthus, and the anemones produced more stems per square foot, making them more profitable than the Lysianthus. So, whew, let's get that out of the way. Number eight most profitable was status. Now, status did really bad for me this year. Um, I don't know what it, it was. It really stunted early this spring. I think it was just the heat. It didn't it didn't like the heat. I planted it out when it was too warm and I, I really should have had it out when it was cool. But my status was, you know, number eight. Now, one of the things that I do on my farm is I instead of instead of offering a CSA to pay for my bulbs. So if I want to buy tulip bulbs, instead of me putting you know putting in an order because i have to order in the spring for my fall planted bulbs what i do is i instead of offering a csa of a bouquet what i do is i offer um i sell the bulbs i sell the bulbs to other florists um farmer florists i sell them to homesteaders i sell them to people who just love flowers i sell them to the community of people that follow me and support my farm and you know usually people think well is it a bad idea to sell your cut flowers to somebody that they're gonna put in their yard, they could go cut them for free. Here's the thing. If I have a small planting of, you know, queen of night tulips in my yard, right? If I have a small planting of queen of night tulips in my yard, I'm not gonna go and want to cut them when I can buy them for a very reasonable price or buy a bouquet so I can enjoy them inside and outside. Um, most people, if they have them growing in their yard, they buy them for themselves for inside or they buy them for a friend or somebody, a, a family member, so that they can enjoy them too and they get it sent to them um, so that they can enjoy and have that experience of that flower. So I don't find that it is bad for business to sell the bulbs, that same bulbs that you're growing. I actually find it promotional because um, they're beautiful. And I mean, if I was selling them a thousand, it might be a little different story, but they're, they're probably growing their own types of varieties that they're going to cut their flowers anyways. So you're going to lose your sale no matter what. So you may as well sell them what they want and allow them to enjoy it and share that. They're going to take pictures and say, yeah, I got this from Hotchkiss Flower Farm. They grow this variety too, blah, blah, blah. Word of mouth is huge when you live in a small town and it's very, very profitable as well because my number nine was queen of night bulbs um i sold bulbs now when i order those bulbs from my suppliers i offer that out so that i don't have to um like i do i do pre-orders of my bulb sale so when i get my bulbs in from my supplier I get them, I bring them home and I go through my inventory and then I, I have to pay an invoice for them. So what I do is I get them home, I sort them out and I already have the money um, from those pre-orders loaded, ready to be paying those invoices. So I already am 100% in the clear of those bulbs. So for example, if I order a case of 100 bulbs from my supplier, so a case of, of specialty bulbs a small case is 100 bulbs so say that case cost me 35 dollars and i had so essentially there's 35 cents a bulb so if i sold those bulbs to my community i'm able to sell them at a markup 
per bulb, which is still cheaper than retail. So if I was to charge 60 cents or 70 cents for that bulb, it's still cheaper than the retail that they can buy or order here. Um, and so then that will, I, I only have to sell half of those bulbs and I'm fully in the profit, right? I don't have any added costs everything I'm planting in the farm is profit because I've already recuperated the cost on those bulbs. So that's what I've been doing instead of selling a CSA. I order in and I sell what I need to sell and I have a lot of time to do. I have six months to sell those bulbs before I have to come up with the money. It's a sure fair way to say, this is a product that I don't have to bank on the weather and, and put myself at such a risk because I, you know, the bulbs come in immediately. I'm able to disperse them immediately for immediate planting and they're happy. Um, I'm happy. It's just a little bit of a safer investment when you're doing the pre-orders like that and dispersing those bulbs. Because my climate is so unpredictable, I don't want to sell CSAs. I don't want to ask people for advanced money on something I don't know if I'm going to have in time. If I sell Mother's Day bouquets, it, what happens like last year, we had a late spring and then it turned into 30 above and I had, a, I had a disaster. So then I would have to come up with the money to pay back the people and that's just too much of a risk for me. I don't want to take that kind of risks on a farm that is, um, such a gamble. So what I do is I, you know, I say I offer these bulbs as they come in, I give them the, a really great price. It, it it's enables me enables me to sell most of what I need to recuperate for cost. So I have a very little cost actually being planted into the farm, because I've already recuperated my cost by my pre sales. And then whatever is left over, I've already broken even and I'm not putting myself at a major, major risk in case there's a disaster. Um, you know, last year, the entire province, actually in Canada, was burning up. There was evacuations. My mom was evacuated. Um, that was south of me. My friends were evacuated to the north of me. Um, my, I didn't see my husband for a, most of the year because he was on fire. Um, it was insane. You couldn't be outside. The smoke was so bad. Um, the heat was ridiculous. The The drought conditions were horrible. Um, it was a really, really challenging year to have a farm. Everything that could have went wrong did. I had the plague of the grasshoppers moved in and destroyed everything. Um, actually, while I was away at Ball, things were great when I left. And when I came home, everything was stems. There was nothing left. Um, because they just moved in and everything was just covered with grasshoppers and it just it it happens it it's just it's nature it's it's the the cycle of the world so the fact that i had already recuperated my costs for those bulbs before i even planted anything made me feel a little bit more reassured that i wasn't going to be just throwing good money after bad my number 10 top money maker in 2023 was mini sunflowers, not the big sunflowers, mini sunflowers. So I took regular sunflower seeds and I planted them really close together to make really small little daisy like sunflowers. And those were selling for the same price as a regular cut flower sunflower. And they every week my florist was I need more of those. Can you bring me a bucket of them? Do you have more sunflowers? Do you have more mini sunflowers? Do you have like I couldn't keep up. <laughs> I could not keep up. She wanted white night or not white night, white light. Mo first off, white light, mini sunflowers or white night, mini sunflowers. And then the gold light, mini sunflowers. Those were the ticket. And I think it was plum, plum as mini sunflowers. Those were like perfect for fall. Um, I only got a couple of them because the grasshoppers completely they completely like chewed that to nothing. Um, so that was that. That was my number 10 bestseller. Now, I'll give you a bonus. Um, I'll go through some of my list. My number 11 was Mount Tacoma. Um, the Mount Tacoma bulbs. The the I sold those as bulbs. I sold those to some florists slash 
um, flower farmers. And that was a really great profit on those bulbs. And then my number 12 was Snapdragon. Snapdragon's got thrips this year, so I didn't sell very many of those. But I still had a pretty good season. And then my number 13 was the Allison Bradley bulbs. Those sold like hotcakes, which I oversold those because I was planning to do winter forcing of the Allison Bradley. I forgot and I oversold them. So I actually didn't have, I sold my, my reserve stash um, accidentally to somebody. Um, actually, a few people were really interested in those. And um, yeah, so I lost out on that. My number 13 was stock. And my number 14 was Queen Anne's Lace. Number 15 was Dara. And number 16 was the Pro Cut Sunflowers, various varieties. So that was my 2023 season. Um, which ones made me the most money? I'm just looking over my list to see if there's anything that I missed. So other things that I've done. Um, so this year, I've started out things a little bit differently. My goals for 2024, my, my initial goal when I started out, my initial goal was this year was my $80,000 year. This $80,000 in uh, gross sales is what I wanted to make on the farm. Um, am I on track to that so far in January? Technically I could be, um, I need to make $1,500 a week, every week, all year long in order to make that goal. And I mean, it's 30 below side, so I'm not really selling a lot of production, but I did actually turn to different avenues for income on the farm. For an example, I sell winter forest products. Um, I sell also um, aeroponics and I sell like those as subscriptions. I have a subscription, gr a group of people that actually every week they can order off of a list of things that I will have available. We have a very small town. I mean, it takes me like 32 seconds to drive from one side of Main Street to the other. So the del deliveries take us about 15 minutes to do in our town. It's really small. It's a very small community. And um, Technically now, I'm not actually doing the deliveries. Chaz is doing the deliveries. He got his learner's license, so he can take somebody with him. Um, and he's learning how to be an entrepreneur. He's learning how to do these deliveries, make the connection with the community members. Um, so it's been a really great job for him so that he can still play baseball because um, he can't really have a part-time job in town based on his schedule um, with traveling for baseball. So... Uh, <laughs> There's been a lot of, of interest in the subscription. So this week, this past week on my, on my way into starting this year, um, I, my target was to start off right off the bat. I need to make $1,500 a week on my subscription sales and farm sales and pre-orders. And I fell short. I fell, I, you know, I fell about $500 short this week, next week. We're, this is this is the this is the next week. We're starting the next week. I'm already off. I've already recuperated that 500 that I missed last week. So today has been a busy day. But I'm hoping that you know throughout the week I can continue to sell my pre-orders, continue to sell my um, con continue to sell my um, subscription products like the lettuce that I'm selling. I'm selling sourdough, um, different things that I can make on the farm seeds. Um, seedlings, seed starts, those kind of things are things that'll come later. Um, but I also have like cucumbers growing and I have melons growing aeroponically. So something that is new, I'm a pioneer at doing this in my community. And it's just one of the things that bridges you into other sales. So I have egg sales. So people buy a bag of lettuce and some eggs, right? Um, for 10 bucks, right? So 10 bucks, there it is. They got their bag of lettuce and, and you, you know, their, um, their dozen eggs and, you know, a loaf of sourdough bread. So here we're, you know, we're already at $20 worth of sales. Um, you know, then we're adding in stuff like, um, you know, some sourdough products um, or a cucumber or, you know, once the, the, when the cucumbers start growing or some of the herbs that I'm growing in the, in the aeroponics like basil and, um, you know, stuff like that. So, Lemon basil is one that's 
really fun um, to grow in the taro garden because it smells amazing and it tastes really great. So, you know, just things like that, they add up. Those $5 add up when you're doing those drop-offs, especially when you live in a small town. I mean, you can drive from one end of the street in town to the other end of the street and hit four houses and make $200, just boom, boom, boom with each delivery. So why wouldn't we do it? And it's also setting us up so that next, you know, next week, not technically next week, but in the future next week, if I have a flush of tulips, I can put a bouquet of eight tulips together, even if they're short ones, I can put them in like a small jar and make that available for $15 as part of the subscription. And they can have it if they want it, like they can order it if they want it, add it to their order. But it's like everyone orders weekly, something little, or, you know, it just adds up so quickly when you start adding those five, five, ten dollars at a time um, with minimal effort. You know, it's, like I said, it takes us 15 minutes to do all of our deliveries in town. And my average sales, this is it, right? So why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I keep doing this? Um, can I reach $80,000 in uh, gross sales this year on the farm? I really hope so. It's very ambitious. Could I reach $50,000 um, in gross sales on the farm? That is really, really likely every week if if even half of the same people order every week that fifty thousand dollar target is very realistic um the eighty thousand dollar target looks really good but it might be something that i'm projecting for you know in a couple more years for for that but growing for a third florist this year that changes things because that is a huge huge chunk of income um that i can you know i'm projecting to be able to contribute to that goal. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And um, I wish I had a breakdown of exactly my numbers and my costs. I don't have that available for anybody yet, but I wanted to get this video out because I know lots of you are kind of working on gathering information from other flower farmers and how they were successful because this you're, you're starting to plan right now. Um, so I wanted to kind of give some insightfulness to what it is that I'm doing um, am I, you know, am I in the hole? Yes, I am still in the hole. Um, but you do have to remember that, you know, this is my full time gig. I do grow my own food. I live in a place where we don't have things readily available to us. Um, you know, in the winter time or in the summertime, even it is very common for there not to be lettuce, spinach, bananas, um, things like that on the store shelves here. We just don't have it. We have one grocery store here and it's really expensive so growing my own food is like having a full-time job um in savings for for our family um to eat healthy organic food because it's not available here and we would have to travel to buy it and all that stuff and even still it's still really expensive because it's a luxury here in our climate to have those kind of things also um i work my my work schedule is around my son's schedule and his baseball which is a lot of traveling so last year you know with baseball alone we had a lot of expenses we spent like forty thousand dollars just in traveling and fees and all those you know hotels for baseball plus we bought a sixty thousand dollar vehicle so last year was a nightmare for costs and trying to make things work and then with everything happening in the province with burning up it wasn't a fair shot on the farm um, and I think that if it would have been an average year last year, the farm would have, you know, I would project that the farm would have hit that $50,000 target um, in what it made. Um, in gross sales, it didn't because I had such loss, but I had, I had in place the likelihood that it could, the potential that it could. It just didn't get to, to have that opportunity because it was, we just had so many natural disasters here. So um, you win some, you lose some. Now this year, I'm going to I'm going to work really really hard and I'm going to do my best to reach my goals. Um that's all I can do and I hope that you do too. So the reason I want to sell stuff like Tower Garden lettuce is because I want to grow food all the time um for my family and it actually justifies it helps you know by having extra to sell it allows me to have that abundance to be able to shop my own um facilities and 
basically it eliminates those costs of having groceries or fresh produce in the winter time for me and i'm able to um, basically grow my own food for free essentially because i offer a service and it also is more appealing if they can buy a bag of lettuce and a dozen eggs and a loaf of bread one-stop shop delivered to their door and you know get winter tulips that i force in my basement it's it's a lot more sustainable to do that um, less of a risk to do that weekly um, as an option than it is to sell a csa and that's why i went ahead and did that because it is sustainable for me and it is more realistic for me and my operation anyway thanks for watching i hope that this inspires you in some way and gives you a new way to think about some things or think about things maybe you haven't yet. Um, and if you have questions, please do reach out. You can find me, um, you can reach out as a contact, uh, contact me at, on a contact form on my website as well at hotchkissflowerfarm.ca. Um, you can find me on Instagram, hotchkissflowerfarm on Instagram. And um, so anyway, be sure to say hi and reach out and let me know what you're doing. I want to know what your plans are for your flower farm and your homestead and, and see what it is that you're doing um, in your space. Much love. Bye for now.